Imagine a world where breast cancer would be treated like a cold. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, it's not far-fetched. People used to die all the time from AIDS, from hepatitis C, and other infections. And today, they don't. Can we learn how we treated these diseases and apply them to breast cancer? I believe we can. However, it requires a switch in perspective, and the time is right now. Ronit El Kabetz, a mesmerizing actor and director, a beautiful woman, a leader of women who looked up to her as a role model, passed away last month at the age of 51. We were part of the team that tried to identify the mutations that caused the spread of the disease in her body. But we failed, big time. Cancer is an aggressive disease where selfish cells take over your body. It starts at one particular location, and then the cells, like using a GPS, spread throughout the body. It is often the secondary sites, the metastatic sites, that are the deadliest ones. How have we been dealing with breast cancer and treating breast cancer in the past 10, 20, and even 40 years? Well, we started widespread mammography programs. We changed the protocol for hormone replacement therapy, and we became very efficient in interventions, rapid interventions, mastectomies followed by aggressive chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So with so many efforts and resources, so many people dedicating their lives to solving and treating breast cancer, how have we been doing? Well, not that good. In the past 20 years, overall survival rate only slightly went down. In fact, the five-year survival rate increased by 3%, a mere 3% in 20 years. This is totally unacceptable. It seems like we're doing things right, but we're not doing the right things. We are standing in front of a map but we're not sure which route to take. In everyday lives, how do we treat aggressive circumstances? Well, usually with more aggressive measures. Soccer stadiums in Brazil in 2013 were flooded with aggressive violence. In fact, 19 people died that year and hundreds were injured. In order to deal with these severe circumstances, the authorities first acted intuitively with an iron fist. What did they do? Well, they increased the police, increased the forces, increased the measures, and the outcome was a total failure. The result was increased violence. The iron fist brought in even more extreme crowds. So, what would you do? What would be your solution? Who would you bring in to tame in the crowds? Their solution was outstanding. Instead of bringing in more forces, they took them out. They brought in the mothers. They brought in the mothers of the most fanatic fans. They convinced them to join a force, a force called security mums. And what did they do? Well. They patrolled the grounds, they were smiling, they were hugging, they were caressing the crowds. And this total switch in perspective was amazing. The violence went down from 19 deaths to zero. These are less aggressive measures to treat an aggressive situation, and the results were outstanding. Can we learn how they treated their aggressive circumstances and bring it into our arena? Let's get back to the diseases I mentioned before. In order to reduce mortality in an aggressive disease for AIDS patients, scientists have generated an online database of specific mutations, specific HIV mutations, and the scientists and physicians now can log online and fit a specific drug for these mutations. Only after 
These measures were taken, mortality in AIDS patients drastically went down. Another example for an aggressive disease treated with less aggressive measures is for hepatitis C. Only after the development of antiviral drugs that can fit into the pathogen, directly delivered to it, only then mortality from hepatitis C went down. What if in breast cancer we could build a huge database of mutations and then use it to identify which treatment we want to use on a specific patient on a specific pathway? And what if we use targeted, directed therapy? Instead of giving chemotherapy to the entire body, we could direct it only to the tumor. And the final example of an aggressive disease treated less aggressively is with other infections. Naturally occurring drugs and their derivatives were developed to hit the root of the problem in different infections. What if in breast cancer we can develop naturally occurring drugs that could hit and target the cell specifically? So if we look at these three measures and apply them to breast cancer, maybe the answers will lie within. We call this approach the 3D approach, database, delivery, and drug. GPS. GPS is a wonderful technology. You tell it where you want to go, and then it will tell you the preferred route, and also tell you the estimated time of arrival. However, one thing we ignore is that before it tells you which route to take, it has to identify your exact current location. If it doesn't know your current location, it will get you nowhere. In breast cancer, we certainly know our destination, but we're not sure which route to take because we're not quite sure which methods we're going to apply. We believe that using our 3D method and milder measures, maybe we can find the right route. In our lab at Tel Aviv University, we did just that. We took as an example the most aggressive cancer. It's called triple negative cancer due to lack of any of the three receptors that sometimes dictate a treatment. And our goal was bold, stopping the spread of breast cancer. In the graph plotted here, you can see two groups of women, those on the red line that will develop breast cancer by the age of 45, those on the blue line that will develop much later on in life. In other words, the women on the blue line live longer. When looking at these specific mutations and analyzing these and hundreds and thousands of other mutations, we suddenly identified that the mutations in genes involved in breast cancer not only involve the cell growth, but also the cell movement from one side to another side of the body. And it struck us that if we target these specific genes involved in movement, maybe we will be on our way to treatment for cancer. And we applied our 3D approach and the milder measures. So two weeks after cancer development in mice, we took the tumors, we profiled the mutations in them. We synthesized a naturally occurring drug, a small RNA molecule delivered directly to the tumor, only to the tumor and to the microenvironment. Two weeks after that, we took the mice and we evaluated them. What you see here is a CT image of the control mice. Everywhere, there's a red arrow that indicates a metastatic site. That's a secondary site developed from the primary site in the breast cancer. The image you're about to see next is nothing less than beautiful. It is more than just an image. It is the exact flash moment where everything came together. Late nights over the weekend experiments repeated over and over and over again, every time changing the protocol a tiny bit. This is the moment that a scientist lives for. 
we have stopped the spread of breast cancer in mice. Zero metastatic sites in the lungs, in the liver, in the brain, and in every other organ we tested. Using our 3D approach, we believe we're on the right track to treatment of breast cancer. With every new medical technology, we have to be very careful because it takes time to mature and to assimilate. We can't blame doctors for using aggressive measures. They're using current protocols, they're using approved protocols. Also, very extreme mutations do require rapid intervention. And our solution might fit some, but not all, breast cancer patients. A while ago, after completing one of my lectures, I went off stage and someone came and asked me, where do I see my research in 10 years? I was caught a bit off guard because I'm used to getting very specific scientific questions and not general ones. So I mumbled something about my research, but it wasn't a sincere answer. However, since then, I went back home and I practiced an answer in, ca in, ever, in case I ever get asked that question again. And I'm going to practice that answer on you. Where do I see my research in 10 years? Well, in order to answer that question, I want to go back to the graph I've shown you before. It's composed of three colors, red, blue, and white. But if you look very carefully, you notice that it's made, of, made, made up of people, women, patients, mothers, sisters, daughters. And every time the line descends, that's another black day for another woman, another diagnosis of breast cancer. So, where do I see my research in 10 years? In 10 years' time, I want to go back to this data and replot it, replot it using our 3D approach and milder measures. And I hope to show that using our method, we extend the life of many of these patients by at least 10 years. 10 years, 10 full years. If you think about it, that translates to a mother seeing her daughter from elementary school to college, or a mother seeing her daughter from getting married to becoming a mother of her own. We all know that our mothers point us in the right direction, whether it be at home, in the soccer field, or also now in treating breast cancer. For many years, we have been letting them down. We have been looking at the problem from the wrong route, from the wrong perspective. However, the results were deadly, and if we change our perspective now, we might be able to see the results sooner rather than later. Thank you.